Okay, welcome back bio. This is Mr. B. We're now getting ready to start section two. And the title of this section is called Science in Context. So what this section is really going to focus on is kind of some more of the ins and outs of what it actually takes to be a scientist, kind of some of the characteristics that you must possess if you want to be successful, and then also what you need to do with your information once you present it, or once you obtain it, I'm sorry, ways to present it and share it with others. And again, kind of just some more of the ins and outs of what it takes to actually succeed in the scientific realm. So if you remember from last time, we talked about scientific methodology, and that was again, you ask a question, you make a hypothesis, you test it using a controlled experiment. You evaluate whether your hypothesis was correct. You can revise it, accept it, or just get rid of it altogether. And then you can um, draw some conclusions based off what you got. So those steps are at the heart of science, meaning that they are really right at the center of science. And that is really kind of one of the core fundamental things that you need to be able to do if you want to be successful in the scientific field. However, that vital heart, again we have a little uh, kind of analogy here, is only part of the full body of science. So just because you're good at those steps does not mean that that is everything you need in order to be successful, and that's not all science is about. So it operates in the context of the scientific community and society at large, meaning it affects, again, other scientists, and it also affects society. So. Biology, again, it's an important class. The reason why we're in here is because a lot of things we have to talk about can also have an impact on the society. And with the growing population that we have now, and all the problems that we're facing, uh, biology is definitely, definitely at the forefront of all of these issues. So we're going to start, uh, again, by talking about some attitudes that help generate new ideas. So as the world's growing, technology is advancing, new problems are coming. So you have to have a certain attitude, again, within the context of science, to help you be successful. So some attitudes, again, I would, don't worry about jotting these down now, but as we go, uh, we're gonna give a little bit more about each one of these. You can maybe get a, try to get a quick note of them now. Is curiosity, skepticism, open-mindedness, and creativity all help scientists generate new ideas. So again, if you wanna be a successful scientist, and again, which all of us have the definite capability of being, you need to possess at least, or probably at the very least, these characteristics right here. Okay, oh, sorry, jumping around here. Da -da. Okay, there we go. So again, we're talking about the scientific methodology, which again is that scientific method that we talk about, is related to exploration and discovery, and it starts with observation and questions, again, that may... Uh, be inspired by scientific attitudes, practical problems, and new technology. So again, that's the heart. Remember we talked about that the scientific methodology is the heart, but there's other problems, or other problems, other portions of the body of science that are important. And again, we're going to take a look at the attitudes first, and then we're going to take a look at practical problems, and then we're going to take a look at new technology. So I kind of jumped the gun there a little bit with the attitudes, but it uh, looks like one of my slides might have got out of order, so I'll put that back correct. So, now, scientific attitudes. So, good scientists share scientific attitudes or habits of mind that lead them to exploration and discovery. So, curiosity, skepticism, open-mindedness, and creativity help us generate those new ideas. So, first off is curiosity. So, a curious researcher, for example, may look at a salt marsh and immediately ask, what's that plant? Why is it growing here? Often, results from previous studies also spark curiosity and lead to new questions. So basically, in order to be successful, you need to actually not just accept what's going on. You need to actually be able to dive down into things a little bit more and to kind of maybe figure out what is actually going on. Why is this here? That is kind of always the first step, asking why. And then often another kind of result, instead of just making a direct observation, let's say you're reading an experiment done by another scientist, which we'll talk about how that's done here in a little bit. And maybe you're really curious at how they got a certain set of results that they did. And so what you're going to do is you're going to look at that result and you're going to take a more in-depth look at that specific change or specific maybe thing that jumps out at you in order to make, again, maybe answer a question that no one thought about before. So curiosity is always step one. 
skepticism. So this is one you might not think about because you might get in trouble a little bit if you're a skeptic. So uh, there is a time and place to be a skeptic, and in science is usually one of them. So good scientists are skeptics, which means that they question existing ideas and hypotheses, and they refuse to accept explanations without evidence. And again, if you take that to the extreme, you might get a little bit of trouble in your classroom. So you got to make sure you take the skepticism portion uh, when it's appropriate, actually. So scientists who disagree with hypotheses will begin, or will, I'm sorry, will design experiments to test them. So again, there maybe there's something that's been true, proven true by one scientist. Another scientist reads their results. They're not convinced. They don't necessarily agree with everything that's being said. So what they're going to do, they're going to go out, they're going to design an experiment on their own that they think is better in order to maybe refute what is said. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't mean that they don't like whoever did that. They're just trying to go along with what they see and what they believe to be true, again, based off of the evidence that is there. And then kind of on the flip side of that, supporters of hypotheses also undertake rigorous testing of their ideas to confirm them and to address any valid questions that are raised. So if you just do one experiment, you get the results you want, and you stop there, uh, in a couple years, I guarantee your experiment's probably going to be refuted, and no one's going to really remember the work that you did. So in order to kind of keep uh, everything uh, fresh, to keep it valid, you always have to retest and retest. And then also, if someone asks you a question, you have to be able to address it in a logical way that makes sense. So doing those experiments over and over again are definitely going to help you out with that. Our next one is open-mindedness. Uh, scientists must remain open-minded, open -minded, which means you're willing to accept different ideas that may not agree with your hypothesis. So if you're stuck in one train of thought, again, that is not going to be very beneficial to the scientific process. It is really focused on whether or not you can accept changes because like I said, what you're learning now is way different from probably what your parents learned whenever they were in biology. And if we didn't have people along the way that were really open-minded about things, we might still be learning the same outdated information. So make sure you're open-minded, again, in this class and always. And creativity, this might not be one that you think of. So researchers need to think creatively to design experiments that yield accurate data. Again, sometimes things can get really complex when you kind of want to figure out uh, what's going on. Um, again, it might not be so cut and dry, a black and white answer. So if you want to be um, an effective researcher, an effective scientist, you need to be creative. So those are the four attitudes that, again, focus around the scientific methodology, around those steps that we went over in previous videos. And also, again, remember the next step, talking about practical problems. So another reason uh, we might want to carry out the scientific method is to solve a practical problem. So sometimes ideas for scientific investigation will arise from, again, a practical problem for the third time. So for example, people living on a strip of land along the coast may face flooding and other problems. So these questions can inspire scientific questions, hypotheses, and experiments. So if we didn't use science to solve practical problems, we would not be a very smart race, and we probably wouldn't have made it to the point that we're at now. So that is key, is making sure we are actually using science to solve things that are relevant to our world. And then we're going to talk about technology, how they are closely related with science and society. So technology is big because discoveries in one field of science may lead to new technologies. So uh, that's kind of a big thing that science is what we use to discover, to actually make the technology, and technology is how we apply the knowledge. So, be, so we can use the technology to help sciences in other fields, to ask new questions, or to gather data in new ways. So technological advances can have big impacts on daily life. So if in, for example, in the fields of genetics and biotechnology, it is now, now possible to mass produce complex substances such as vitamins, antibiotics, and hormones that before were only available naturally. So the advances in science, the ability to make these vitamins is again applied to the new technology, which is actually making them and having them in a way that's easily distributed to the masses. Again, that's an example of how technology and science are really uh, closely related. So I uh, jumped ahead a little bit too quickly there, but that's it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions.